20-1, back again. A little bit more of solving quadratics. Today we're going to talk about the quadratic formula, the last of the processes for what we have been doing. Solving quadratics means we want to find, remember, the zeros or the roots or the solutions. Depends upon what you want to refer to them as or different ways they can be referred. So one more time, what did we talk about? We can do it graphically on our calculators. If a question says to do it algebraically, do not do it graphically. But great way to check. You can always check on your calculator and hopefully your algebraic solution matches up with the graphical solution. The other things that we did, we solved with the factoring process. We solved by isolating the x using the square root principle and completing the square. So those are all processes that work. And today, we're going to talk about the quadratic formula. So you have choices anytime you go to solve a quadratic equation. Any of these processes technically should work. But you need to become efficient at which process is best. In one of the videos, I showed you that factoring can be much more efficient than isolating x if you have to do a whole complete the square process. So you need to become efficient at thinking for yourselves and figuring out which process works best. What's nice with the quadratic formula that we're going to talk about is that the quadratic formula works for all situations. So this is kind of a foolproof method. However, just because it works for all situations doesn't mean it's the best. It's not always the most efficient. Is it the most efficient way to do it? Absolutely not. Again, I showed you. If you can factor something and you're good at factoring, which you should be, factoring is quick and easy. However, the quadratic formula is always a go-to process. So let's take a look at that. If we are given a quadratic equation, always equal to zero, here's your quadratic formula. That, if you have your formula sheet, you can see it on there, will always be given. It's always the same thing. The negative b with b squared, subtract 4ac, and that's under the root sign, and all of that's divided by 2a. So this formula will work for all situations. However, it's a big formula with lots of stuff plugged in. Making sure it works with your calculator is what's going to be important. So here's an example. We are looking at page 10, uh, the first example. x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Now, technically, wow, what do we have here? We have a simple trinomial. So with a simple trinomial, well, I need two things. Multiply to negative 15, but add to negative 2. Well, are there two numbers that multiply to negative 15, but add to negative 2? What about negative 5 and 3? Negative 5 and 3, you know what? Multiplies to negative 15, adds to negative 2. So we do have a factorable quadratic equation here to x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. How do we get 0? If that equals 0, because x equals 5. This could equal 0 if x equals negative 3. So for this, x could equal 5 or negative 3. There's the solution with factoring. Recognize it's a simple trinomial, quick factoring, identify your roots. Not real complicated. However, let's say that you don't understand that that's factorable. Well, now we can go, if we choose to, to the quadratic formula. So what we want to do is we want to Take our formula, what does x equal? Negative b. 
we'll understand that B is negative 2, so we would have a negative, negative 2. Because the formula says negative B, make sure you double negative it. It's negative B, which is negative 2, plus or minus the square root, B squared, negative 2 in brackets, squared, because we want all of B squared minus 4 times the A value, and we have a coefficient of 1 with the X squared, times the C value, which is negative 15. So there's what we plug into the top for our numerator, and all of this is over 2 times 1. So there's our equation. Lots going on. In order to solve this equation, you want to break it into parts. Different people do different things. Plugging all of this into your calculator at once, I think, is a little tricky. I like to get the value under the radical sign, our radicand first. So what are we left with? Well, a negative negative 2 is 2, plus or minus. And if we do our calculation correctly, following order of ops under the radicand, we should get a value of 64. Because you would have 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 15 is a negative 60. Change, change gives us a 64. And all of that is over 2. So, quadratic equation leads to substitution into the quadratic formula. And now we're starting to simplify. But here's what, how we get two answers. Again, we have this plus or minus. So there's two calculations we can do here. From there, we know that x could be 2 plus the square root of 64, which we know is 8, divided by 2. That's one value for x. Or x could equal 2 minus... Because of that plus minus, it's 2 minus the square root of 64, which is 8, divided by 2. When we calculate this, 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Or 2 minus 8 is negative 6, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So just like if we did the factoring on the previous slide, we got through factoring x equal to 5 or 3. When we use the quadratic formula, x equals 5 or negative 3. Personally, I really hope you know enough about factoring that that's a much quicker, much easier process. But if you don't understand factoring and you keep going the quadratic formula, it will work, but it's a lot more work to getting the correct solution. So let's try the next one. Find the roots. x squared plus 6x plus 2. Again, simple trinomial. Are there two things that are going to multiply to 2 but add to 6? Well, there are two things that will do that, but they're not in my mind. Way too ugly a question. So we need to go right to quadratic formula. So what is x equal? Well, again, a value is 1, B value is 6, C value is 2. So we have a negative B, which is negative 6, plus or minus 6 squared. Don't need brackets because it's just a positive 6. Minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 2. And all of this is over 2 times the A value of 1. Formula is given, you just have to plug in carefully. So from there, x equals negative 6 plus or minus. Well, we have 36 minus 8. And 36 minus 8 is the square root of 28 over 2. So there's the calculation. I like to get this radicand value first. 
But now what's the problem? Problem here is we don't have a perfect square. Square root of 28 doesn't work even. So this is going to have to be written as an exact value. We have negative 6 plus the square root of 28 and that over 2. Now, here's where you got to think. Going back to grade 10, what could we do with the square root of 28? Well, I want to put the square root of 28 into mixed form. Remember, we can break 28 into two factors, 4 times 7. Why is 4 times 7 useful? Because the 4 can be rooted out. If I have 28 is really the square root of 4 times 7, the 4 can root out, become a 2, and I still have the root 7. So this is better written as negative 6 plus 2 root 7 over 2. But we're still not finished. In terms of simplifying exact values, the two terms up top have a negative 6 and a 2 with a denominator of 2. All, or both those terms, if they can be reduced by what's underneath, that's what we want to do. Well, we essentially can divide 2 into both of those. So if I divide 2 into both of those, we're left with negative 3, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus root 7. So one possibility is x equals negative 3 plus root 7. Well, I'm going to do the exact same thing for my second value of x because this time it's negative 6 minus root 28 all over 2. Same idea. What can this root 28 become? Same thing as up there. x is negative 6 minus 2 root 7 over 2. But again, we have to understand fraction form. This 2 can divide into both of those terms. So negative 6 divided by 2 again is negative 3. Negative 2 divided by 2 is a negative 1 root 7. So there's the two values for x also written as negative 3. Instead of writing it twice, we can just write it as plus or minus the root 7. Same answer, just written as 1 instead of the two of them. So there's your quadratic formula again. little trickier in terms of the simplifying, but just using previous knowledge. So here we go one more time. In this case, we want to find the roots again. Well, finding the roots here, what's important with this is we've seen this already throughout the course. This is just telling you you can round to two decimal places, which would be the hundreds. So as soon as it says round, that means we don't have to work with roots and decimals. We can, well, we, we need the decimal, obviously, but because there's roots and decimals, we're going to use the quad formula, but we'll just punch the answer into the calculator to see what we get. Still on page 10, here we go. X equals, and again, there's our A, there's our B, and there's our C. So what do we have? Negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, which is negative root 3. Watch, you have the negative included in your c value. And all of that is over 2 times a. So there's your quadratic formula punched into. Negative b plus or minus b squared Subtract 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. 
Again, because of the amount of work here, I still personally like to do the calculation under the radical sign first and get a radicand value. If you go 2 squared subtract the 4 times decimal 3 times negative root 3, you end up with a value of approximately 6.08. Take the 6.08. However, you really should keep this in your calculator so that you're exact. Don't round it to the hundredth place and leave it as that. Leave it in your calculator so that you can work with it. And at that point, all of this is over 0 0.6, which is 2 times 3 tenths. So from there, if I split it into the two processes, we would have x equal to negative 2 plus square root of 6.08 divided by 0 0.6, or we would have x equal to negative 2 minus square root 6.08 divided by 0.6. First value, x rounded is 78 hundredths, or x could equal negative 7 and 44 hundredths. There's the two solutions allowed to be rounded because of what's presented in the question to the hundredths place. All comes down to effectively punching in the information into your quadratic formula. So, from there, there's on page 11 discussions of the discriminant. So what's important with the discriminant is to understand the discriminant does not solve. It does not give solutions. What it is, it's a value that identifies the number of solutions that an equation will have. So the discriminant is just about how many solutions are possible from a particular equation. How it works is note that the discriminant value d is equal to b squared minus 4ac b squared minus 4ac is your discriminant. And whatever the value is under the root sign, that actually tells us how many solutions there are. Here's why. If the discriminant equals 0, so you plug in b squared minus 4ac and get a value of 0. Well, when we look at this, negative b plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2a. If this is a value of 0, well, the square root of 0 is just 0. So really, we get left with x equal to negative b over 2a. We don't have the plus or minus because we're adding or subtracting 0, which does nothing. So if your discriminant equals 0, you only have one solution, only one solution real root it's called because we are just touching and our root our x-intercept will only occur once there's only one real root however even though there's only one real root there's two answers but they're equal here's why really quickly if I said that x squared minus, uh, sorry, plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Well, if I factored this, multiply to 4, add to 4, we would get x plus 2 times x plus 2 equal to 0. We do have two answers. x could be negative 2 or negative 2. Well, x could be negative 2 or negative 2. There's really one root, but it's two answers. So in this case, our graph for this would look like this. Because we would have the x-intercept at negative 2. There's two negative 2s, but it's 
negative 2. So there's only one real root. There's two answers, but they're the same. So that's one situation. What's important to understand? When the discriminant equals 0, it's one real root. Just one, because it's only going to hit the x-axis once. Simply by plugging in b squared minus 4a times c. The other situation is if the discriminant is greater than 0, which means the discriminant value, b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant value is positive. That's what this is saying. Well, what happens if we get a positive b squared minus 4ac? Well, negative b plus or minus any value, you're going to have a value in there, a positive value. Well, that means that you're going to be able to do two calculations. Because there's a root a value, sorry, the second one would be minus root a. If I have a positive discriminant, ends up being, I shouldn't use a because I've used it, but if it's a, a value of a, I'm going to go negative b plus root a, or I'm going to do negative b minus root a. I'm going to end up with two solutions because my discriminant is positive. So in this case, the discriminant is positive, means you have two real roots, real values. There you go. There's a situation. Our discriminant is positive. Because it's positive, I'll get two. It could even be opening down, but I'm going to get two. Both of these are situations where the discriminant is positive. Because a positive discriminant will give two solutions for the equation. And the last situation is when your discriminant is less than zero, which means it's negative. Well, in this case, x equals negative b plus or minus. If our discriminant calculation is negative, well, hopefully at this point, what happens if you have a negative square root of something? Well, right now, it's not possible. When you get to calculus and uh, university, you might start to work with imaginary numbers. But for us, negative square root isn't possible. It's not possible, which means the math is imploded, which means x is equal to nothing. There are no solutions because of a negative discriminant. So this case... Negative discriminant means no solutions. And no solutions just means you could have your parabola vertex is below the x-axis and it opens down. Or vertex is above the x-axis and it opens up. These are two parabolas that would have no solutions because the discriminant would be negative. So here's how it looks. Remember, this has nothing to do with what the solutions are, only to what you have for possibilities. So we want to determine the discriminant. Remember, the discriminant is just what's under the radical sign. B squared minus 4AC. Well, we don't have right now a true quadratic equation. Let's make it a quadratic equation. Everything on one side, so it equals 0. So there's our A. Negative 24 is our B. And 72 is our C. Discriminant doesn't tell us solutions. It just tells us how many solutions we're going to have. So if I plug in to calculate the discriminant, b squared, negative 24 squared, minus 4 times a times c, when we plug that into our calculator, 
we get a D value of 0. What does a discriminant of 0 tell us? That tells us we're going to have one real answer, one real solution. Technically, it would be two numbers, two equal numbers, but really, because they're equal, one real root when the discriminant is zero. That's all a discriminant is. Quick little calculation, easy to work with, but you have to understand what the discriminant represents. And the last one on this page is a quirky question where it's not just calculate the discriminant, calculate a k value. Well, we have to understand that we do have our ax squared, bx, and c, so we have our equation equal to zero, but it's saying, what are the k values so that there's no real roots? Well, what do we know about a discriminant if there's no roots, no solutions? Well, we know that d would be negative in that case. No roots, d is negative. So we know that our discriminant has to be less than zero. The discriminant value is negative, so it's less than zero. So let's plug in b squared minus 4ac has to be less than zero. What does that tell us? Here we go. There's our b, negative 30 squared minus 4 times a, which is our k value, times c, which is 25. And this must be less than 0. So if we solve this, we get a value of, well, let's go through the solving process because this one's got a little twist to it. 900 minus 100k is less than 0. We need to solve for k, so we're going to subtract 900. What does that leave us with? Negative 100k is less than negative 900. Now here's the quirky part going back to previous math. A little bit in grade 10, but this was taught in your grade 9 course. We need to divide by negative 100 on both sides to isolate the k. Whenever both sides divide by negative, you need to flip the inequality sign. Divided by a negative, divided by a negative. Both sides divide by a negative. We're left with k. We're left with 9. But our less than sign becomes a greater than sign. So what this question is saying, what could k be for this situation so there's no roots? Well, we know that k has to be greater than 9. Any value bigger than 9, oops, value, that was kind of ugly spelt. Any value bigger than 9 will result in no roots. There you go. So, a little bit of a quirky question that asks if you truly understand what the discriminant tells you. No roots, d is negative, so we can set up instead of an equation, an inequation, so that our discriminant is less than zero, and there's multiple answers. Anything bigger than nine will result in that. So the discriminants. There's your textbook assignment. That finishes up solving. One more lesson before the exam. So give it a try. See how you make out. Have fun with it.